Welcome to this five-star luxury site just a stone's throw from the fascinating, mystical and historic Glastonbury in Somerset. This is Old Oak's touring and glamping site. This adults-only campsite is set in a tranquil, rural location, providing a peaceful retreat for those looking to enjoy the beauty of the Somerset countryside. This site has been on our list ever since we bought our caravan last year and we are finally here. We're staying for three nights on a fully serviced super pitch and our first impressions of the site have been fantastic. When we arrived, we pulled up the long driveway and we were met by a lovely chap on a bike who showed us to our pitch. He uh, just handed over a leaflet, gave us a couple of bits of information and let us get on with it. A super easy check-in. It was really hot yesterday, so once we'd set up, we didn't do very much at all other than crack open a beer and relax. Once it had cooled down enough, we took Dozer for a walk around the fabulous on-site dog walk before relaxing with a burger and another beer around our fire pit for a very chilled evening. Today we are off to Wells, which is just a 20 minute drive away for some Sunday roast and a stroll around the town. So come along with us and when we get back later on, we'll give you a full site tour. Tucked away in the center of Wells is the Courtyard. This family run bistro style restaurant serves locally sourced food and dishes up fantastic Sunday roasts. We had the vegan nut roast and the oven baked sea bass, both of which were delicious. Well, we've enjoyed our roast dinner and now we're having a little stroll around Wells and it is beautiful, but it's also really warm today. So we're sitting under a tree on Cathedral Green. Admiring the beautiful view of the cathedral behind me, um, which Cathedral Facts began building in 1175 and apparently inside is the second oldest clock in Britain. Oh, really? I wonder where the first oldest clock is. I don't know, but fascinating. Ooh, I think I might know that. Stay tuned for more info later. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's also dog friendly, but we're not going to take Dozer in today because he's had a, a lot of out and about and he's quite tired. So we're going to admire it from the outside. Which is no real hardship because it is pretty beautiful. Very impressive, but more exploring. Let's go. Wells is also the smallest city in England. Now we obviously have a thing for small cities because recently we went to visit St David's which is the smallest city in Wales. Check out that video linked here. Wells is a charming mix of history and modern day appeal. After exploring the cathedral, wander the cobbled streets and visit the cosy tea rooms, traditional pubs and local shops. Wells even had a moment in the limelight as the fictional town of Sandford in the film Hot Fuzz. We didn't bump into Simon Pegg though on our visit. We have stumbled across Bickers Close behind me here, which is a super Instagrammable spot if you're into that kind of thing. This is fascinating. It was built over 650 years ago to house the Vickers Choral of the Cathedral Choir and is the most complete example of a medieval street in the country. We're heading back to the campsite now after a lovely afternoon in Wells and bonus, as we were heading back to the car, we stumbled across a band playing tunes in the bandstand, which was lovely. As soon as we're back at the site, how about that site tour? Four 
types of pitch here. There's a standard, a super, a premier and a superior. They've all got hard standing and they all have lovely mature hedges planted between them for a nice bit of privacy. The Premier has the addition of satellite TV hookup. The Superior doesn't have that but it does have a fantastic patio and a picnic table. We're on a super pitch and here it is. You can park any way round you like on the pitch, which is quite refreshing, but we just opted to go standard. All of the hookups and the drain point are on the back left of the pitch, as you can see, and they're just for you. Everyone has its own bollard, so really nice and easy. It's good and level, and there's plenty of space, including a nice bit of grass to the side and the back, which is great for dozer. We hired a fire pit and logs for the duration of our stay at a cost of £19 for three nights. This is just a super cosy treat and it feels like a lovely atmospheric touch. So let's have a little wander around the site. Each well-spaced pitch is located in one of six distinct areas. So whether proximity to the dog walk or the shower block is important to you, if you're staying more than seven nights, you'll be able to pick your own pitch. We were only there for three nights, so we didn't have that luxury, but we were really pleased with our location. So this is our field called Lower Oaks. As you can see, there's a lovely green space in between all of the pitches. The pitch next to ours is a superior pitch and our neighbors vacated earlier this morning. So we can give you a little look around. And again, a really good size. There are a couple that are enormous. I suspect they allocate it based on your outfit size. But here is the lovely little patio area with a picnic table and a fire pit so what a little gem of a spot to relax of an evening and this particular pitch is lovely and sunny because the sun goes down over there so golden hour in the evening absolutely perfect one thing that really stands out is how well kept the green areas and all the planting areas are uh, this particular collection of pitches has a lovely view over to the east In this part called the terraces area is where you'll find most of the standard pitches. Dotted across the site, you'll find a selection of glamping cabins, shepherd's huts and cedar lodges. Perfect if you want to stay but don't have a caravan or motorhome. This is one of the toilet and utility blocks and i uh, got to tell you, you're in for a treat. This is the nicest we have ever seen. So let's go in and have a look. Inside resembles the lobby of a five-star hotel. You have the choice between private shower and washrooms or the usual separated men's and women's facilities. So over here you've got a super stylish washing up area which also has a microwave and a freezer. That is super helpful. Just next to that, we have a room where you have an iron and an ironing board and a washing machine and tumble dryer. So we are now in one of the individual shower rooms. Got a nice big shower there. Super lovely, nice and powerful. And you've got a little wash basin and a toilet area. The shower blocks are spotlessly clean and well equipped. No push buttons here for the showers and plenty of room in each cubicle. The ladies also has a vanity section with plugs and large mirrors. When it comes to emptying waste, facilities are great. For camper vans and motorhomes, the drive over point is huge and easily accessible. For cassette loos, in addition to the usual, there's also a flashy automatic machine that you can use for just a couple of pounds. Down here you have the reception and shop, which is open from nine till seven. Some lovely little picnic benches outside to uh, enjoy maybe an ice cream or a cold drink. And in here you've got a games room and kind of leisure area. You've got a pool table, some sofas, there's a book exchange. This is also where the information is. There's a dartboard, if you fancy some darts. And there's also a bean to cup coffee machine for just two pounds. The 
let's see if I've still got it, shall we? Well, not too bad. Inside reception, along with the friendly and welcoming staff, you'll find a well-stocked shop selling essentials and local produce. It stocks an excellent selection of local beers and cider. As well as local prime beef and lamb, we also thought their veggie range was excellent. If you've forgotten any essential, you'll be well looked after here, as will your four-legged fur pal with a dedicated dog section. There's even an eco-friendly refill section for washing up liquid and other products. Oh, and did we mention they also sell fresh homemade cakes and self-serve ice cream? Yum! Outside reception, you'll find a seating area where you can enjoy fresh takeaway food seven days a week, including wood-fired pizza, fish and chips, Mexican, Indian and gourmet burgers. There are public footpaths right from the site. You can find maps of walks to borrow in the info room. It's a two-mile round trip to Glastonbury Tour from the site. I found a field of chickens. Hello, chickens. How are you guys? Hi. Hi. You want to be on camera? You're lovely, aren't you? Hello. Now, if you like fishing, you might want to know that this site has its own exclusive fishing lake just for the use of guests. Fishing at this peaceful spot will cost you £8.50 a day. There's a rather impressive Somerset mural here. You can't see the hare and the deer looking up at Glastonbury Tor. Very interesting. This site is great if you have a four-legged friend with you. There are two dog walking areas. This is a 300 meter long narrow stretch, which is tree line and absolutely lovely. Just over this hedge here is a three acre field where your dogs can just run free to their heart's content. If it's muddy, there's also a dog shower. How about that? How about that? <laughs> This site is so well set up for dogs. There's a dedicated washing machine and tumble dryer for dog bedding, special dog parking areas to secure your pooch while you visit the shower block, plenty of water bowls around and doggy ice cream available at the shop. The dog shower even has hot water and free dog shampoo. It's great to have such a big area to let Dozer off lead although he wasn't too keen on trying that pond. <laughs> I'm not sure. Happy to say that it has cooled down quite a bit because that is a perfect opportunity to light our fire pit. Now, as I said, we've hired this for three nights, and for each night that you're here, they give you a starter log, and you just pop this in and light the packet. And they've given us about a dozen, maybe, of these um, heat logs, and um, we burnt them last night, and they don't give off any smoke, so it's really great, and they're super warm. So let's get this going. Earlier on, I popped over to the shop, which is really well stocked with loads of produce, but most importantly, locally brewed beer. This is from Wookie Brewery, who only opened in 2000, and this beer is said to have magical supernatural ingredients. It's called 
Which Way Home and it is their flagship session IPA. I'm very excited to give this a try. So let's crack this bad boy open. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, that's lovely. Really refreshing, a light grapefruit taste. Very, very nice. Easy on the palate, recommend. Good morning. One of the great things about Old Oaks is that in the evenings they have visiting food vendors and in the mornings, Monday to Friday, they have a breakfast service between 8.30 and 10.30. So this morning, keen beans that we were, went over there to grab some breakfast. But alas, best laid plans were thwarted because there is no breakfast today due to a staff shortage. So while we were going to have a fun little sequence of uh, delicious breakfast from the visiting food truck, we're just going to have to make do with some B-roll of our boring bog standard breakfast. Here we go. Somerset and not sample some cider, which is a tongue twister that I am not going to repeat. We are off to Wilkins Cider at Land's End Farm, which is about a 20 minute drive from Old Oaks site. And we are hoping to taste some traditional cider and perhaps sample some cheeses. And best of all, this place is dog friendly. Wilkin Cider Farm is a rustic affair, so don't expect a polished tourist attraction. The absolute joy is in chatting to Roger and experiencing his passion for this amazing product that they produce on the premises. Legend has it, according to Roger, that this painting was actually done by Banksy when he and his assistant arrived for an out-of-hours drinking session after Glastonbury one year. Now, 23,800 litres each, which is 5,200 gallons. Woohoo! That is a party, isn't it? Because with farmhouse cider, because there's yeah. nothing in it, no yeah. chemical, you've got to keep it airtight. Right, got you. So I move it into these black ones, I fill them all up there, look. Yeah. So I fill them up, screw them down to keep it airtight. Yep. Yeah. And then, there's some more in there, look, all the black ones, look. Oh, no, I see, yeah. Uh, they hold 300, 330 gallons each, which is about 1,500 right. litres. Yep. Well then, when there's in the black ones, I move it into these 50 gallon grey barrels, so you can fill they right up, yep. screw them down and keep it airtight. Yep. And I move it when I want it from there into the wooden ones. Ah, got you, so, right. Like I said, because it's a natural product, yeah, you've got to keep it airtight. Right, so, yeah, I see. But I do a lot in these wine boxes now. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Five, five litre one, ten litre one, twenty litre one. But what it is, is one of these bags inside, look. Oh, I see. You've got the tap there. Yep. So as you draw your cider out, the bag collapses inside. So there's oh, no so air. it keeps it air. Oh, so I see what you mean. When you get down to the last drop, if you put a bit of wood behind it like yeah, that, yeah. you won't waste nothing. Not Lovely. There's also some bespoke merchandise and local produce on sale 
and cheese from Somerset Cheesemakers, which we just so happen to sample. Yeah. Since Christmas, because it's go quieter, I only buy 20 trucks at a time now. And every fortnight or three weeks, I expect I've had a ton and a half since Christmas. Wow. You've eaten a ton and a half? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what they call it, a truckle? Is that like... Truckle. Ah, I didn't know hey, that. You try it. Best you. Will do. Will do. Mm. Oh, look, that dog wants some cheese. He does, doesn't he? You can't have Stilton. Oh, that's good. <laughs> mm. If you visit at the right time, Roger will be happy to show you the process of harvesting and pressing and making the cider. We weren't quite there at the right time, but he did let us look around the orchard. Well, that is an unexpected treat, and it doesn't get any more authentically Somerset than that. Such a beautifully rustic experience. The guy who runs it, Roger, what a guy. All the stars have been here, and he's happy to tell you about them all. Super, super lovely guy. The cider, oh my God, is incredible. And as soon as you walk in, they say, do you want a drink then? And they just pour your drink out of the straight out of the barrel and it's honestly the purest cider we've ever tried. So this is definitely a must, an absolute hidden gem. You heard it here. As well as from Mick Jagger, who's also oh, been here. As well as from Mick Jagger, um, Johnny Rotten, you name it, pictures of all the stars in there. I asked Roger and Michael, two of the people who were working there, how much percentage was in that cider? And they were like, well, you know, we do everything by smell and by taste, so we can't accurately measure the percentage. But they said it was somewhere around 6.8, and then they gave me some of the special stuff that they normally only give to locals, and that was like over 7%. So I definitely need to eat some of that cheese to soak up some of the alcohol. But what a fantastic place to visit only 70p for half a pint of cider so definitely a hidden gem to add to your list when you're staying at old oaks for sure saw this place from the road as we drove past and frankly cannot resist science museum yes please Nice. The cafe serves lunch, cakes and light bites, so we grabbed some sandwiches and chips and paid the few pounds extra for entry into the museum. Well, I don't know about you, but I love a good roadside attraction. I especially love roadside museums when they're collections are just completely random old radios clocks wallace and gromit mug collection of old buttons a purple ronnie poem about hangovers men and discoveries in electricity i could have done with this the other day i was trying to remember how to tie a bowling knot for something in the garden that would have been very helpful I think your Dyson's a bit out of date, mate. I don't know what this is. It's a little bit creepy.
OK, this may not be the best of museums, but we always feel it's important to support places like this. They're our British roadside heritage after all. I think we may have been the first customers in here in a little while. Next up, we headed to Glastonbury, a town that is as quirky as it is charming. This spiritual place has a deep connection to Arthurian legend and ancient mythology. But it's not all ancient history here. Explore the town's eclectic shops, soak up the whimsical atmosphere that make Glastonbury a great destination for a touch of magic and modern day fun. Besides the nearby Glastonbury Tour and Abbey, campers at Old Oaks will be ideally placed to explore other Somerset attractions such as Cheddar Gorge, Wookie Hole Caves and the Roman Baths in Bath. Well, we're back now and we have tucked in already to our five litres of gorgeous dry cider. And that place, do you know what is absolutely the pinnacle example of a hidden gem? So we're just going to kick back and enjoy some cider. In our great mug. <laughs> it's enormous. <laughs> it's, big, it's a pint, it's only a pint. <laughs> Looks like a hobbit mug. It does, doesn't it? What are you doing? We have woken up to rain on our last morning at Old Oaks. And look at this cute sleepy bear cuddling up to his favourite toy. Well, that is us all packed up and ready to leave Old Oaks. But first, let's give you a rundown of our stay. Every single pitch is lovely, absolutely immaculate, really well kept and lovely in private. If, like us, you're travelling with a four-legged friend, this site is beautifully dog friendly. You've got two choices of dog walk, a 300 metre walk there and a three acre field with a dog swimming pool and there are lots of dog friendly off-lead walks nearby. 
If you're looking to escape your caravan for half an hour, the TV and games room is a fantastic option. Why not grab a coffee while you're there? And also the reception and the shop is fantastic. And most nights there are visiting food trucks. So if you don't fancy cooking, it's a great option. The location of this site is fantastic. Glastonbury Tour is only three quarters of a mile on foot. Glastonbury itself is only a mile and a quarter or 10 minutes in the car. There's lots to see and do around here. If you are looking for five star luxury toilet, shower and wash up facilities, look no further. This has got to be the most luxurious site we have been at so far. Well, the big question is, would we stay again? And the answer is absolutely yes. In fact, we've already booked for seven nights in April next year. Meanwhile, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.